Ken Corla, and um, I think it's been a, lot, been a long debate, been here for almost all of it, and I think it's also been a good one. Uh, in the limited time that I have, I really just want to make three points. First of all, first point, this motion of no confidence tabled by Sinn Féin is a deeply cynical and nakedly political one. It is pointless. The government has a clear working majority, and that will be evident from the vote tonight. And I think actually Sinn Féin, often master tacticians, have made a tactical error here because you've allowed us to demonstrate tonight. You've allowed us to demonstrate tonight that we have a clear working majority, that we will be able to pass a budget, and that this government can and will last full term. We will prove by the vote tonight that there is no prospect of a Sinn Féin led government this year, next year, the year after, and maybe not even the year after that. This is a show motion, it's a publicity stunt. It was designed to get coverage and airtime for Sinn Féin politicians who have no real solutions to the problems that our country faces, just snappy sound bites that tested well with your expensive focus groups. It is a waste of parliamentary time as well. And let's not forget, Count Corla, only last week Sinn Féin wasted 45 minutes of parliamentary time calling the same vote twice while complaining that we didn't have enough time to discuss important legislation such as the legislation on MICA. And this week, three hours are going to be wasted on this debate, even though we know, uh, the, even though we know, we, we know, we know the outcome of it. The truth is, Count Corla. The truth is, Count Corla, that Sinn Féin wants chaos because it benefits from chaos. We have in we have in London no functioning government. We have in Belfast once again no functioning government, and Sinn Féin wants the same here. Last week, they demanded an early budget to tackle the cost of living, but Sinn Féin is not sincere about that. They're not really on the side of hard-working Irish families. If this no-confidence motion had been passed, we would have been faced with an election in August, several months to form a government, the budget would be pushed back, and the people would not get the help they needed this winter. My second point, Cancorla, this is a good government, one that I believe is doing good work. We've done a lot in two years, and yes, we've a lot more to do in the next two or three years. And allow me to put on record just a few examples of the good things that this government is doing. We've invested 80, 40 billion euros to help businesses and workers get through COVID through the pandemic unemployment payment and the employment wage subsidy scheme. We have the highest number of people at work than, uh, in the history of the state, 2.5 million people, with jobs growth in every region and full employment uh, now within, with, within grasp. Biggest job increases in the southeast and the southwest, the lowest unemployment now down the western seaboard, including the northwest region. Record levels of FDI, trade with other countries never been higher, and that underpins our living standards, breaking all records. We're introducing paid sick leave for all workers because nobody should feel under pressure to go to work when they're unwell. And the sick leave that we will pay will be more in a day than Sinn Féin gives. It will be more in a day than Sinn Féin gives in a week uh, in Northern Ireland. We've increased the minimum wage and we're moving towards a living wage. We have a new, new law planned on the right to request remote working. We're building infrastructure for 400 hubs nationwide, a new public holiday in February, new laws to protect workers' tips uh, and service charges will be passed this week. Um, we're introducing a basic income scheme for artists and we have double spending on the arts ahead of schedule. We have an auto-enrolment scheme so that everybody at work has an occupational pension on top of, their, uh, of the state pension. New laws to protect consumers from being taken advantage of, an insurance plan which is bringing down motor premiums and has outlawed the loyalty penalty, a new retrofitting scheme with warmer homes, cheaper to heat, a new corporate enforcement agency to crack down on corporate crime, helping businesses to, to restructure and survive, uh, through SCARP for example, a cheaper and much quicker alternative to examinership, funding for business, businesses to go digital, funding to help, help businesses reduce reliance on fossil fuels, low cost loans to help businesses with COVID um, Brexit uh, and also uh, future expansion. For children and families, seven weeks of paid parents' leave, increased back to school clothing and footwear allowance, five new technological universities, increase in the student grants, school meals expanded, school transport no charge, post grad uh, grants increased, huge investment in special education, record numbers of SNAs uh, in our classrooms, special education teachers, more special classes than ever before and more pathways for people to get the career they want, with 10,000 new apprentices uh, a year by 2025 alone. And I could go on, and in doing so, I think in many ways, I'd be repeating what has been said earlier. But I do want to come to my third point. 
and we've heard a lot about change from the members opposite tonight. But all change isn't good. Brexit, Trump, Chavez, Lenin all promised radical change. And the change happened. But that change made things worse for most people. And you can add them happily to the list, Deputy. You make my point for me. All change isn't change for the better. And yes, Sinn Féin, yes, Sinn Féin would mean radical change. Radical change for the worse for the majority of people. Instead of being at the heart of Europe, where we are now, we would be on the periphery, led by a self-declared Euro-critical party that opposed the Euro, opposed European citizenship, opposed the single market, today opposes EU free trade agreements, and only last week opposed European defence and security cooperation, uh, known as PESCO. Our influence in Europe would be diminished. Our economy would go into reverse, maybe not immediately, but certainly within three or four years. There would be fewer jobs, fewer successful businesses, less FDI, reduced trade flows and reduced exports. Why? Because Sinn Féin takes the economy for granted. It simply does not understand how it works. I never hear anyone from Sinn Féin talk about job creation, talking about enterprise policy, talking about industrial policy, talking about how we can help businesses establish themselves, scale up and be successful. That's because they take our economy for granted. They don't understand that before you can apportion wealth or redistribute it, you have to create it and you have to create it again and again and again. Under Sinn Féin, the cake would be smaller and that would mean less for everyone in due course. And finally, in relation to climate, uh, Count Corla, uh, as Deputy Patrick pointed out, I think she's absolutely right on this, it was significant uh, that uh, climate was not spoken about in the Sinn Féin motion, was barely mentioned, if at all, in Deputy Macdonald's speech. And that's because Sinn Féin is a climate sceptic party. They are opposed to any action, any action that might be unpopular, any action that might be unpopular, um, even if it saved the planet, whether it's carbon tax or a ban on wind farms. As a Sinn Féin, Cancorla, Tom Wienock, August Mihakiet, Lesh and Real Tishreshen.